What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Um, as probably all of you have seen, the She Hulk trailer. Brian, once they show. Once they showed um, the Hulk, I was like, this is going to be horrendous. This is going to be. And then when they showed this CGI, clearly, <laughs> I mean, the CGI Ooh. for She-Hulk is quite bad. Let's call it what it is. Let's not, oh, it's not finished. Come on, man. Does Marvel or Disney put out stuff that doesn't look finished? Why would you do that? Like, this is a rough draft. We want to show it. We want to pay lots of money for all of you to see a rough draft. This doesn't, Brian, this could be a sleeper. Who knows? But we've been saying from jump since it was announced that this is not going to be good. Brian, what were your thoughts when you saw this 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 show, man? This unfunny show, because that's what I think is going to be an unfunny show, a comedy with no laughs. What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are that Shrek on Disney Plus looks pretty promising. <laughs> that's yo, that's what people are saying. I'm sorry, man. That's kind of what it looked like, right? Yeah, I, I say that only half tongue in cheek. Um, yeah, we've had concerns. Uh, we've had concerns. It's the curse of the Hulk, man. I don't know what else to call it. Like, I just, there's something about this character and its extended universe that has been impossible to get right since Bill Bixby. And that, honestly, is a curse unto itself. So, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of places to start here. You mentioned the CGI. And I'm with you. Unfinished or not, it's not good enough. And I guess there's rumors that they were rushing to get this out because it's the time of the TV upfront. So they wanted to like have some footage out there and they wanted something out there. It was a release date and which is August 17th, but it just doesn't look good. You know, and like you go back to Ang Lee's 2003 Hulk and like part, I mean, there's lots of issues with that movie, but part of what sank it is when he starts transforming and kind of looks like, you know, the Pillsbury, green Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy and, and like the effects start to lose you and you're kind of like, you know, it, 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 that character cannot be held back by the CGI. And yeah. unfortunately, Jennifer Walters looks like she's being held back by the CGI in some of the shots in, in this movie. And even, even Ruffalo's pulse doesn't look quite as, tight or as sharp as he did in in endgame either so that's number one number two is we've heard the tone the legal comedy i mean that has our skepticism very high that you can pull this off um but i watch this show and i just don't see the hook like what what's the when you saw this trailer like what even putting aside our biases what what did you see as like the real general audience hook for why you need to tune into this show? Because I couldn't find one. I couldn't find one either. And in trying to find them, the only things I can pick out is, or, or or at least that I found interesting was that she's you know being recruited as a lawyer for superhero superhumans. Um, who knows if we see Daredevil in this? Um, would like to. I don't see how we don't. But if we don't see him it could be a very disappointing um uh thing that they don't do um <sighs> goofiness man i just i i don't have time for it the the matt murdoch thing is really interesting to me because the whole tone and feel of this trailer doesn't fit at all anything we've seen Charlie Cox do with the character. And it's interesting because I know that No Way Home was obviously a much lighter, much, it was a lighter toned film than the Daredevil Netflix series. But they managed to contain him to a scene where that didn't really matter, right? There was a little bit of humor in the scene, but it wasn't really like, you didn't see him in action. You didn't have to square up, you know, the light and palette of the Spider-Man with Daredevil. I'm just worried that the tone of this Hulk show doesn't fit 
Charlie Cox's Pat Murdoch at all. And therefore, does it really make sense to include him? I, I'm going to bring in something totally unrelated. So Brenton Thwaites, who plays Dick Grayson on Titan, there was an interesting article actually this week, which talked about the CW network crossover. I don't know if you read it, but he basically talked about the fact that he refused to appear in that. Um, and so they basically put an image of the team into the CW network crossover, but the actual Titans didn't appear in the show, even though they were asked and apparently a part was written. And his response I thought was really telling. He said, totally, it doesn't make sense. He's like, I appreciate their interest. He's like, but the world we built with kind of the, the seriousness and the grim and the dramatic nature of our characters doesn't in any way match the universe of the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. And I agree with him. And he said, like, I don't want to be associated with a project where the tones are that much yeah. in conflict. And I read that and I was like, I wonder the same thing here. That's very interesting. It, it, it is the same thing here, Brian. It's like, I'm sorry, but the kingpin that we saw at the end of Hawkeye was very comical. I don't know that they stuck real close to the comic books. I know that they did what they did there, but the kingpin that we got in Daredevil and this kingpin in Hawkeye is the same situation here. It didn't fit. Although it was the same guy, it was it didn't it didn't look right or feel right for that world. So if Daredevil is reduced to making jokes and and not uh, giving us the, the Daredevil that we were used to seeing in the Daredevil show for three seasons and he never got bored. His character was, he was always to me the star. I don't know, Brian. She-Hulk to me is just a, is just something I'm not interested in. Uh, they haven't even gotten the Hulk right, yo. They... Well, that's what I mean. Like when I look at the material, I'm like, if it's a comedy, I don't think there's enough. Did you think there were enough laughs in this trailer to get you really excited? No, if you were, if you were coming at this as a once. as a fan of comedy, I didn't see. I didn't see it. If you're a fan of you know, the Hulk and superhero genre, I don't know that you saw whether it was because of the CGI, whether it was because of the lack of action, quite honestly. I don't know that you saw anything that would say this is a must-see event for Hulk fans. Which kind of left me with, what is this? Like, I, And we've heard rumors that the production of the show has been a quote-unquote mess. Uh, I think um, Matt Bellany at the Puck put that out. And he kind of said, like, there's a lot of bad mojo going around about what's going on with this show behind the scenes um and i we've seen the trailers for all these shows to date this was to me the least inspired of of those uh, i just like i said i just struggled to find out and it's coming in, in you know late august you're releasing a movie in late August. That's usually a write-off. That's usually a time where you don't expect people to watch. People going back to school, end of summer. I I don't think this show is going to do numbers. I don't think this show is going to really find an audience. And I, I think it will just come and go pretty quickly. And we'll kind of be left with, you know, if it is Mark Ruffalo's swan song as the Hulk, a pretty pretty much going out with a whimper yeah not to mention i don't totally understand the sequencing because at the end of shang chi his arm is in a sling and he's back to being human but in this he's professor hulk again so is this show happening before end game because his arm is not in this like or is that just sloppy story though it's quite possible that this is set in a different uh timeline um prior before um the before endgame it's quite possible who knows she may be already be out there and we haven't seen her but i don't know i'm just not they even gave kim ross uh, they even gave kim ross a cameo and he was kind of being a little goofy right he was no longer the sort of hard-edged 
laser focused sadistic soldier that Emil Blonsky was in Incredible Hulk, he was kind of sitting there almost kind of cracking, kind of wisecracking. And I, I, you know, I know that we saw him in Shang-Chi that Blonsky's kind of got a whole other storyline going on now with Wong. But mm-hmm. again, the, the, the bit of Tim Ross we got, I was like, okay, we've totally seemingly changed his persona as well. I hope Tim Roth asks the question, is he a fighter? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Tim Roth was pretty good, actually, as Blonsky in, uh, yeah. in uh, an incredible Hulk fighter. Yeah, man. Uh, incredible Hulk was, was, was pretty good. Um, but I don't know what, what's going to happen with She-Hulk. Um, I'm definitely not looking forward to seeing the Hulk. It's just like, what's going to happen when you get the thing on screen? Right? Like, how are you going to look at, how different are you going to look at him when comparing him to the Hulk in terms of how you feel towards him? Right? It's going to be very interesting. That's why they should have made the Hulk this crazy animal. <laughs> And and they they haven't, for whatever reason, yeah. they haven't gone that route. Um, I think the, the yeah, and character, I, the thing, is going to suffer. Ahead. Yeah, and as I said, I, I think watching this trailer also to me just kept bringing me back to the one fear I always had when they first launched this show, which is Professor Hulk steals the thunder of what makes She Hulk different. It's like because you've already seen Professor Hulk be this benevolent smart, civilized persona, the impact of seeing Tatiana Maslany being able to retain all of her faculties and her personality when she is the Hulk, it, it's, a, it's a retread. You just, it doesn't have any impact because you've already seen Mark Ruffalo do it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of the She-Hulk a show and um, how does she look to you guys? Obviously, the CGI is a little off. I mean, listen, man, we all know that Thanos was CGI and he looked amazing. Just because, oh, it's a show, but is it? No, 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 no. When you got Amazon and Netflix spending millions and billions of dollars on shows, you're going to tell me you can't make this look great? I have a problem with that. Well, we we talked about some of the failings of Jupiter's legacy on Netflix, right? And you saw like there was some sloppy CGI and effects in that, and it cost that show. Costumes were good, effects were not. Yeah, yeah. They um, <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> if I could just get in the room with them and be like, I'll, my first question is like, what the hell happened with the Hulk? You know, why, why is the Hulk? Who? Why is who? Why is the Hulk? How he is now, how did he end up this way where you're not even afraid of the Hulk? That's a problem. When you're not afraid of the Hulk or nobody's afraid of the Hulk, of course you're you're afraid that he may go crazy. But when the Hulk changes, man, when you know, when I was a kid and watching Bill Bixby, his transformation was like, you know, now it's like the Hulk is like, eh. You don't care. You don't care. But anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the She-Hulk uh, show. Are you guys looking forward to it? Um, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell and share with your friends. And we'll have a conversation, hopefully, in the comment section. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.